Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know my dad. Man, on. hey, man. We down here in New Orleans, man. It, it's a trip, bro. We done pulled up, man. We in the building. Already, man. man huh? Guess who we got in here, man? You can't come to the city, man, without seeing this cat right here, man. If you if you if you down here and you ain't with, ain't checked in with this cat right here, man, you wrong, man. <laughs> G the P is in the building, man. man What's going you. on, man? Thank you, man. Ha- thank you for having man, me. Man, thank and your you wife. for coming, nigga. Uh, I had to. I've been. I was a fan of you and your wife show for a long time. Are you serious? Yeah. When Big D told me about y'all from Media Mogul, I could. I was like, man, yeah. Do you, do I know him? I'm like, hell yeah, I know him. And appreciate it, man. <laughs> man, I appreciate you, man. I, I just know we had to come and do New Orleans. Man, I knew that if we were gonna do this, you know what I'm saying. This here is the heartbeat of for me entertainment, hip hop, jazz, mm-hmm. all the stuff that really you know make a uh, make for just a uh, good game. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like in our culture, yeah. good game, good you know, food too. good food, good mm-hmm. game. Like like game, game mm-hmm. embrace the food too. Hustlers, yeah, hustlers. Mm-hmm. You know, you got Baby and him from down here, Master Mesky. P from down here, Tyler Perry. Come on, Tyler Perry mm-hmm. from down here, man. Stop it, man. But, but the most important part, you got G to P from down here in this building. Thank you, thank you, man. I appreciate it. And I want to say thank Nati for giving us the spot too to do man, this. Man, shout out to Nati, man. 3D Nati. Come on, man. 3D Nati is dope. I, I done pulled up, man, and got embraced with love, man. The city is holding it down, man. And I, I like I said, I don't be knowing how this going to happen, man. I walk by faith, not by sight, bro. Right, right, right. But I get we the don't, same love in Texas, too, when I'm down there. So sure. I just want to tell you that. Yeah, hell man, yeah. Man, we better. Dallas. And if you, you, you call me, nigga. You know I what I'm will. talking about? Texas, period. You call me. We going to get it popping. Some boss talk. Hey, man. Go ahead. I know already what she want to do. No, we like to take it back. We want to know about you, where you were raised, how you were raised, your parents, I mean, your whole community. Okay, well, uh, my mom and dad, um, my mom named Sheila, my dad named Gregory. That's where I get my name from, my real name, Gregory. Um, I grew up a lot of places between the east and the southern one. I even lived downtown in Six War. So that's where I was born and my mom and brought me home and mm-hmm. I was in Tremaine. Mm-hmm. So that's the most historical black area in America. Like It's like old, like, um, like how Orange Mound might be in Memphis. Um, that's where I lived at. Then we lived in the Seven Wall. That's where you know, um, Tyra Matthews from Manny Fresh, Mia X, Lena Fanet, to name a few people. And then I really connect more to the East, or whatever, um, because I went to school a lot out there. So New Orleans East is like it was a good area at one time. They had bad spots too, because you might have heard Juvenile say on like Soldier Rag, um, mm-hmm. bundles of dope running from the Magnolia to the Goose, uh, um, niggas beefing like the checkerboard and the Goose. And um, that's a place where I stayed in a lot too. And then, um, you know, I stayed there and stayed in the East and the Southern World. So that's the place that kind of shaped me. And you um, said your mom and dad was together? Yeah, my mom and dad was together and stuff like that. That's um, good because, you know, it doesn't happen very often at all when mom and dad actually stay together and helped raise you. Yeah. Because a lot of times it'd be like split household or the dad leaves and gone. Do his own thing. Right, right. Now, my mom and dad been um, together since they were like 21 or 23 or whatever. That's a good Uh, example for you. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, brothers and sisters? Yeah, I got um, got two brothers. One of my brothers doing life in Angola. His name is Brandon. I got a sister. Life? Yeah, in Angola. He got convicted in the same parish as C. Murder in Jefferson Parish, um, which is on the other side of the river, on the other side of the Mississippi River, um, where he was convicted at in Gretna. But the stuff happened. How long he been gone now? He been out in 13, uh, it'll be 13 summers coming up or whatever, like, and wow. yeah, so he been out almost 13 years now. So he got, they got a law called um, 10-2, and it affected him and C. Murder and a lot of other people, where you only need 10 jurors to convict somebody instead of 12. And Louisiana, Oregon was the only state that had that that was implemented after the Civil War, and that was a way to silence the black um, juror right. on a vote. So, um, you know. So a lot of times, do it be out here where a lot of times when you go in them court, You'll have like eleven white folks and one black. That's how they had it. That's how they, yeah they are staying. And then this is a more conservative part of. It's not New Orleans. It's outside. So it's like I guess like how y'all got Dallas and Fort Worth. Mm-hmm. All the it's outside of New Orleans. It's not in Orleans Parish. Um, it's in Jefferson Parish. Like I said, and it's more conservative. This is the same place when they after the trip. Law. Yeah, what what happened was they did change it. And after 2018, all the voters voted to end it, so they can't do it no more. And um, but since um that happened, they made it uh it didn't, it's not retroactive yet. 
So people like my brother C. Murray and like 1,500 other people still can't get a fair day in court because of that law. And some people then died trying to get a fair day in court or whatever. But people that was on direct appeal, they was able to um, get a, at least bind out. But if right. you exhausted all your appeals, you just can't do nothing unless exactly. they change it. And Man, the Supreme Court sad. said the Supreme Court said it was unconstitutional, but um they didn't they're not trying to offer no remedies. They said right. Louisiana gotta try to figure it out on their own. So we praying that the DAs and the legislators, uh the Louisiana Supreme Court change it and do what their predecessors couldn't do. But to your initial question, I got a brother named um Brandon that's in Angola. I got a brother named John that's older than me. He the one that put me on all the hip hop stuff. And then I got a sister named Deandra. We call her Dee. And I got a sister named Anjane. That's my youngest sister. Um, and um, that's all. Okay. Man, that, that's dope, man. You know, um, just uh, to think about how the, you said judicial system. I think about, uh, you know, my boy uh, P's brother, man. Uh, that boy there, man, he been locked up a long C time. Murder, yeah. C Murder, been locked up a long time. So, yeah. And, and it's just crazy how the system will just take you, man, and just hide you, man. And a lot of times, man, it don't be even something that you, you can appeal it so much in Texas, I know. Mm -hmm. And then next thing you know, you don't even have a shot at it no more. You just, you, I mean, the, the way they're playing games with uh, everybody is crazy, man, when it comes down to these lives, man. Yeah. It exhausts all the appeals. Like you said, once you exhaust all them appeals, then, you know, it's pretty much. You really don't got nothing else. And um, that's what kind of happened with my brother and C. Murder and the 1,500, 1500 other brothers and sisters. But um, Angola was named after Angola, Africa. Yeah. And that's why they really lock them up like that. And that's what the jail was made for, to put black people in there. So it's still doing the same thing they've been doing historically. It's big. And, and prison business is big in Louisiana. Man, prison business is big Texas, in the yeah, South, period. Yeah. period. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just in general, because if you go to any city, man, blacks are being uh, really, really uh, forced into a systematic way of doing things that they're not, they're, that they're not even, uh, you know, yeah, that they're not even really... Uh, you know, privy to, you know, we go in those courtrooms, man, and we look out of place. We right. don't even be long in those places. And when we get in there, we, we speak in a language that we're definitely not familiar with. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I'm like, man, people. what the hell is going on, man? I done been in there. When you done been judged by 12, man, it's a problem, man, when you start seeing how how, how one-sided things are. Yeah, of course, yeah. You don't see that balance in the scales like they say. No. The scale is always in balance if you look at it. Exactly. Fact. For a reason. No, yeah, you're right about that. Too. <laughs> now that you say it, you're right, too. Even on, I think, even on the damn uh, Insta, uh, Twitter thing, I think, um, or, or the emoji thing, I think it'd be looking in balance. It's always in balance. Well, it's know. never balanced. So right. that tells you something right there. Right. And a lot of times it means, uh, I think it was spiritual and uh, material. Mm. And it's a lot to go with that, them scales. Right, right. It's just crazy, man, when you start looking at the way they do it, it's like they're playing a mind game with you and, and right in the front of your face. Right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so let's talk about it, just just uh, the culture of the music, man. Mm. Like, where is hip-hop right now for you as far as in the whole, not just in, in the South, but mm. just in general? What, what do you see music at right now? I mean, I feel like, you know, music always evolving and, you know, it's different from the early 2000s and the 90s or even when it started in the 80s and the late 70s and all that, like, keep evolving. I like ways that I feel like a lot of artists making way more money. They're getting two, some artists getting $200,000 a feature and for shows and all that, artists wasn't getting that back in the day. A lot of artists are way smarter because so much information on the internet. They read more and then they learn a lot from what happened before them. So I feel like people making more money, you, you create more bosses, more people on YouTube making money and stuff like that. So I feel like it's in a good place. I do feel like a lot of times the internet made everything smaller and everybody kind of biting a lot of stuff sometimes what they might see winning. So they see Chicago winning with this sound. Everybody wants to sound like drill rap. Uh, some people might hear what Atlanta doing and sound like, you know, uh, try to sound like young boys. So I think that kind of been always around, though, but I, I don't like that when people kind of bite other people's style so much. Because in the words of Soldier Slim, like you said, first thing, be original, you know. So oh, yeah, style man. Feel you more. Man, you got to be original, man. That's the biggest thing, man. Like, where is the originality at now for our people and the way we do music? And, and you know, a lot of times people are handing the mellow off to somebody else. They even be saying crazy stuff. Like, they'll be like, uh, man, you know, uh, such and such the goat. He don't even be from the culture. That be messing with me, bro. Like, they'll say stuff that I ain't going to put no names on it. But it's just weird to me. Like, how could you even say something yeah. like that when you know what our people came through to even give us this whole sound and this whole foundation? Right, Billy. I can't... I 
I can't understand that. That's a naive person to even think that way. To me, right? I'm just being real. But a lot right. of niggas be saying, "No, nah, he the goat. Just the goat." Right. Like, that nigga ain't even from my culture. Oh, that's that like be somebody, messing me. That be messing me up, nigga. Right. That's like some saying somebody to go to jazz and they don't really come they from don't even that. Come from that. They can that. play it. I don't right. mind you entertaining right. it, but you can't you can't harness the the fact of you the goat, nigga. Right. Hell right. no. We created this. Yeah, this our thing. And, and we so nice, right? Niggas too nice. They too nice? <laughs> niggas will give you anything. They gonna stop and help you when you got a flat? Right. These niggas will help you, but they will lose every time. And you got to be more strong with what God give you too. You got to hold on and possess it and respect it. Right. The Bible even tell you don't cast your pearl before the swine. Swines, yeah. So what you doing? They ain't gonna appreciate Respect it. what you got. Exactly. That's all I'm saying. So hip hop is like that to me. Don't be out running around here talking about this person, that person, a goat when they really ain't even from the culture. And then a lot of times they didn't even think it was gonna go this far. They thought it was a gimmick. They thought it was a fad. It was gonna be around and it was gonna be gone. But when they seen big money, now everybody won't be involved. Or everybody Man, won't try exactly, to run it. Exactly. Exactly. That's and why put I, who they want at the front of it and say he the person because he's selling all these records up because he's doing this in media. And he got this certain complexion. At the end of the day, you easy to appeal to everybody because you dealing with all ty all sides of the scenario. Mm -hmm. But that don't mean the scale is right. Once again, it's right. imbalanced because a lot of times the things that my people did. Uh, when I say my people, people that been in the hood, been shot, uh, didn't have no father figure. The father was uh, uh, pretty much uh, stripped away from and put in prison, prison. Or, or, or or basically uh, just just just. Pass right by for opportunity because of the color that he was. Mm -hmm. Now you telling me that he, once this person come up and get it out of the mud, you ain't gonna respect him on a whole nother level, man. Right. Stop playing, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now they do be crazy. Like say you respect another person from another culture before your own when you seen where they came from, and you like, damn, you gonna give him more love than this person, and you know how hard it is coming from where we come from with the eyes stacked against you. So that is crazy. I respect anybody that look like me that got it from nothing, just like y'all coming out here and setting up this stuff and all that. This stuff ain't easy like y'all did it all together like and that and that's sort of hustling the grind <laughs> man and you know respect that. that's that's god man we've been doing it we did it in atlanta twice we did it in vegas twice cali twice houston twice now we in new orleans man stand up for boss talk one on one y'all on roll with the show yeah. <laughs> but we be at the studio too nigga yeah. we be at, you know what i'm saying we crazy with right. it I think if we outwork the competition, I heard Frank Lucas say, "Man, we got I got a product that's 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 uh, better than the competition mm -hmm. for a price that's lower than the competition." Right. When hey man, that's something. When you think about what he really just said when he said that, nah, I'm about true. to give it to you. Nah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> so man, just just a little bit about like like what's the uh, what's the main who is an artist right now down here in New Orleans that's really just popping off the charts right now that 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 you think is next up. Well, what I would say, like, if I had to think of one guy and one female that come to mind, like, Rod 49 doing what he's doing. You know, you had Lil Baby in the video. Kevin Gates came out. Hot Boy came out from um, the record hot. Um, Vulture Island was hot even before Lil Baby, but when Baby got on it, that was even better. Um, that song with no hook was great. And then it was kind of like how when, two, um, when Kodak dropped that No Flocking in 2014 with no hook and it just blew up or whatever and that's kind of how that song is out here so Rifle 9 he got a baritone type voice he talking his stuff and all that and he from downtown I like what he doing on the female side I like super bad a lot I used to work with her um, I used to work with her early and um, she got a record called It's a Meeting in My Bedroom and everybody be booking us she out there in um, Jacksonville right now she got something in Savannah, Georgia so that record Hot Even Silk even sung it a little bit on, on, on um, TikTok or something she reposted it so Silk even like what she did with they even like what she did with the record old record so she that's the two that I really like a lot Ride 49 and um, Super Bad but she from Kenner which is where the airport at, um, New Orleans airport at. Check it, man. Y'all don't understand, man. We're here with G2P, man. Hey, man. Make sure you guys like and subscribe to our channel, man. But the thing you got to understand, man, we can, we down here with, with the one, the one who got the keys to the city, the keys to the streets. This cat right here, man, hey, I'm going to be 100 with you, man. Ever since we came in the door, man, he been showing me mad love, man. I feel like nigga out on a ride. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Thank you so much for the, for the hospitality, man. Thank you for spending time. You know, those phone calls definitely, they matter. You know what I'm saying? Right, Understanding right. who in these 
cities they met that matter man so right. anytime i come down you believe me i'm gonna call before i even show up i'm checking in nigga. you gotta check in when you really want to come down here and make an impact in the streets yeah and i i, I seen um young guru was talking about that jay-z engineer was talking about how people checking in is not a bad thing he said it's just like they gonna connect you with the right people right. it's not people. like nobody extorting you it's just like look i know some people that i could tie you in with and you'll have a smooth sell while you're down here and all that because i'm gonna put you with the right people and you're gonna be in good hands so i know the same way with big d for media mogul i know the same thing with sean pull and you know, show me love let me come to his house and interview him and all that and he always showed me love down here so like i said all y'all dudes come with some good energy from dallas area and i do um, I, I fuck with it I man swear. listen man sean cotton say cheese tv man that boy pull up and do interviews at my spot man show me so much love man you know what i'm saying ever since i started mm -hmm. i mean you gotta realize i ain't start off having all them subscribers and all that it came with time and but when you see the real ones that show up from the jump like klc mm -hmm. like uh, uh sean cotton like big d the mogul like trill talk no pill talk certain ones that i just and it's a lot more but right. that just showed up man it just really showed us love and pretty much embraced the movement man boss talk 101 we putting it on the map and we standing behind them we with them and that's what makes the difference now we got g to p and he with me nigga period hey, yeah definitely that's that's, <laughs> that's big boss talk right there yeah man, man so uh go ahead mom so um Growing up, when did you ended up going, coming into the industry? Oh, the music. Well, when I was in, um, I used to be doing it like a lot in high school, you know, trying to get equipment and stuff like that when I was in high school. And I always did, like you said, Master P, Baby and Slim, um, looked up the Damon Dash and Puffin' them all that. So I always wanted to do that. Then my dad was a singer. So when I was younger, we used to watch like video soul. Uh, Showtime at the Apollo. He used to play like the Miracles, the Moments, the Manhattan, the Dale Finders, the Shy Light, Stylist, all this. So mm. we grew up with all that in the house, all that soul music and stuff. So, um, and by him being a singer, he was he used to sing in a group with Lil Ya, um, Uncle. My dad was singing a group called the Mystics and Lil Ya from UNLV. Um, and his um, cousin name is Jason Mitchell that played Easy E. His dad was in the group with my dad. So, like I said, I come from it, and that's what made me want to do it. So, when I was in college, my cousin had started a record label, and he was like, man, you need to come over here and help us out. My other cousin told me. I went down there, and I started helping out or whatever. I was, like, passing out flyers, CDs, T-shirts, whatever I had to do to um, take pictures. Anything they needed me to do, I was doing it. I wasn't like, I ain't about to hold no camera. I ain't about to hold no bags. I never had no ego. So I was able to, like, I feel like I could always had that hustle mentality. I had that hustle mentality. Like I said, I could go from shining shoes to saying we don't shine shoes no more. You know, we own a building now. So, um... I just was doing that, and then I was doing the a &R stuff over there with my cousin label, and he had an artist. He had the youngest ones. He had Super Blanco that was in the group squad up that Lil Wayne used to put out mixtapes with in the um, early 2000s. And then um, after Soup, he started working with the youngest ones. Then the SA that made the song Meet Me Halfway, and then I started working with um, BTY Youngin', which was like, People call them like the modern day soldier slim of this era because, you know, he had been shot. He'd been to jail for all kind of stuff. And he was living his rhyme. So I used to work with him, too, and, and up into this blog and stuff that I'm doing now. But, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I got into it. Man, that's dope, man. You, 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 like I said, it's some people that's born into it. it. It got to be, it can't be just on you. It got to be in you. Right. And it's just the, the way that you express in the facts that, hey, man, I was here or there. I was over there. God, that's God paving the way. Right. And then another thing, too, that I want to say, my brother, that's named Gold. I know Jay Prince said the reason he got into the business because he was trying to do something for his brother. I think his brother's name was Sir Rapper. That's right. That's right. And my brother was doing the music and stuff, too. So I used to see how Boosie and Webber was doing, and I did that with my brother and my partner. And this is around the time everybody was popping ecstasy big in, in the 2000s, and they used to be rolling all the time, just want rap all day. And they said, put a beat on it, just rap. So I'm like, man, I'm going to get some equipment. And when I was going to this college, community college, Delgado, in the City Park area, I had got my money from my student loan, and I had bought all the equipment. So that's kind of how I first had bought some equipment and I did it in Atlanta. So even before I was doing the stuff with my brother and my cousin, I was on, I mean, before I was doing it with my cousin, I was doing it with my brother and just trying to put out records on our own. So I had bought Man. my own equipment and stuff, Phantoms, NPCs, everything. Spent 10000 after Katrina in Atlanta or whatever and bought a studio, even well, before I was working with my cousin. When, when you think about uh, the, the different people, the Manny Freshes, the producers that come from down here, KLCs, Amanda, KLCs, all, mm -hmm. uh, all of these different guys, man, what really sticks out to you when it comes to the bounce music and stuff? What's what, what's the what's the stick out point for you? I mean, it's just it's just our thing. It's just like like you said in um, in Jamaica, they got they the reggae music, you know, in, in Puerto Rico, they got the reggae tone, like you know, that's our thing, or whatever, you know, hyphy in the bay, like is that's what that's our thing. 
uh, crunk in um, Memphis. It's just our thing. Like, it just connect to us and all. And that go all the way back to, you know, back to New York when they kind of got that from the Showboys and stuff like that. So that record was pulled from a record from Hollis Queens, T.T. Tucker, and people like DJ Jimmy and Soldier Slim and, you know, uh, uh, people like Partners in Crime, Everlasting Hit, man. They did what they did with it, and it's just something that resonated with us. So when you hear people at block parties riding past in their cars, bumping the music, you'll hear that beat coming out there, and we call it that beat. So it's just something to part of us. It's just like you can't have... New Orleans without having gumbo, second line, and you know, with the Indians and jazz or even bounce music. Like, that's all a part of the things that make us who we are. Man, you know, you just one of those dope guys, man. Like I said, that it's just dope to be done, you know, even be sitting in your presence with the history and stuff that you hold, you know, of dealing with your culture and your community. I mean, top three artists of all time, dead or alive. Top three artists, dead. Number one. In rap? In whatever genre, it don't matter. Uh, Just you, yeah, your top three, genre. the top three that sticks out to G to P. That's with E. Niggas going I'm, down. I'm say, uh, Michael Jackson. Money okay. Mike at number one, uh, y'all. He just Tupac. said Tupac. Tupac at number two. Number three. Jay Z. Jay Z at number three, man. If I could have had one more, no, nah, we ain't got no oh, one more, man. All right, well, them three. Number three, Jay Z. Jay Z, yeah. Number two, Tupac. Tupac. And Michael Tupac. Jackson. Number one, yeah. Well, it's a lot of people that allude to Michael Jackson not even being on the level of Chris Brown anymore. Cause yeah. Chris, what do you think about that? What well, I think, nah, nah. Michael, <laughs> Michael Jackson, Gary and Dan is fine as he one of a kind. Like he, man, just, I'm just telling you what the people say on this show. These boys be saying whatever, man. I mean, people might say whatever because, like I said, they might not be as super I agree with you, but I, I, I'm going Michael Jackson. I mean, he influenced all of them. Even though Mike got influenced by James Brown, like you know, Michael Jackson, something different, bro. He, he just was a different type of special talent. But why, yeah. why, why, why Tupac and not Biggie? Well, I'm a big Tupac fan. Tupac and Jay Z, my favorite rappers. I said, why Tupac and not Biggie? Because to me, like Tupac, was we talking the era now, and Jay Z yeah, and like, like, that too. Tupac. The reason I say Tupac and not Biggie, whatever. First of all, like Pac, just not is an actor, as a poet, as just like a revolutionary type mind. Like the way his songs, he had stuff like Dear Mama, you know, Keep Your Head Up, uh, Change. Um, I get around. He had some for every type of feel. Like Biggie made good records, and Biggie can make his songs, and Biggie can rap his ass off. But Pac really give you goosebumps when you hear Lord knows and all that. And Tupac influenced so many people. Everybody won't be the next Tupac. Everybody say I'm nobody. Don't really see not taking away from Biggie. You don't hear a lot of people say oh, I'm, I'm the new Biggie, but everybody say I'm the Tupac of this era. Uh -huh. I'm a Tupac. Uh, I done had a lot of shows, man. Michael, uh, shout, out to my, shout out to my boy Mike Jones. Mike Jones said Biggie was that guy, like, because he was big like that, and he was able to correspond with the people and bring the people into a place where he was at, and that he was fat, ugly, whatever, however. Right, I, I stay cooching down, down, yeah, down to the side. Down to the side. So right. when you start to see this big nigga come on the scene, and it wasn't popular being mm -hmm. fat at the time, and you start to see fat niggas get on. The, right. You know, it, it, this is the movement that he, that's how he interjected. Because even though Heavy D was a because fat dude. he was a big dude, Mike Jones was a big dude, and he lost weight. So to those big guys, you may see it from a different perspective. Well, well what I'm saying is, I right, just say like Al Capone. You don't gotta if a dude could be like I'm a gangster guy, but I'm I'm like an Al Capone type guy. You ain't gotta be big to say you just. They just feel like they got the Al Capone attitude, even though they probably not fat like Al Capone was. They just liked his the way he was gangster. With Tupac, Pac had dudes tattoo stuff across their stomach. Everybody did that. They had dudes wearing bald heads when they really wasn't even going bald. Like Pac and influenced so many people so yeah Mike Jones probably was influenced by him because he felt like Pac Biggie wasn't always the attractive guy but you know you put some Versace glass on him Versace shirts and now he a ladies man like Pac said but to me Pac was going to be immortalized no matter what that's why in certain colleges they got Tupac poems that people recite you know they got people in Cal Berkeley that talk that got classes about Pac so Pac got statues of him in Europe and all that like it's a lot of things that Pac did his influence is just so many different ways and okay. then he one of those minds that anybody could talk to in an interview from somebody on Dateline to somebody on Rap City and you'd be and you'd be like, man, it's a deep ass brother. So Pac, music and just his personality, everything he was, was transcendent. So now Jay Z, let's get on him. Uh, Jay Z, um, why Jay Z and not Lil Wayne? Why Jay Z and not Scarface? Why Jay Z and not uh, give me some Pimp C, nigga? I'm a Pimp C fan. Yeah, so love, don't, I, don't get yourself nah, out there in no I, trouble. On I, I, I love Chad L. Butler and all that. You, you better, know? you better, love, nigga, because yeah, he, he did. He held it down for the South, nigga. Oh, and he loved Louisiana but, too. But that's why, well, you know, he was born in Crowley, Louisiana. That's right. And then he moved to Port Arthur. That's but right. I love 
love Pimp C because Pimp C love the South. So I'ma just let that be known first. <laughs> now the reason why I've loved Jay Z and Wayne, see, me and Wayne like probably like a couple years older than me. So we kinda come from both of us love Jay Z. Wayne favorite rapper Jay Z too. He got Jay lyrics on his own. Wayne, the what he turned into is on a whole nother level. And I, and I still kind of probably give it to him. But me just being biased, I love Jay-Z so much. But Jay-Z done done so many things in the game, not just in business. I'm talking about straight music. He just on a whole nother level. But Jay kept evolving. You know, he stayed fresh with the game. And he always just was modern with it. And he was fly in fashion and music and business and so many different things. But Jay-Z a hell of a rapper. And he don't write nothing. Mm, okay. Just like Biggie whatever, But if them dudes Are still alive I don't know If I, we would still Be saying it Cause Pac and Biggie Were still around But by them not being around And, and the people That are still here Jada one or whatever to me. See it's funny Because these conversations Get a little wild for me man Like when you start Talking about these people And you start talking About these brands And you start talking About these movements mm -hmm. I gotta talk about Master P And, and then I gotta talk About Baby right. Because I'm a big fan Bro I don't play around With the business stuff I'm a boss So right. boss to boss You gonna always Respect them niggas That you know That really You know Laid put it down yeah. nigga, nigga that put Paved the way Right yeah, and, and that other niggas Pretty much They didn't have it easy As a lot of other niggas Because they was From the south Right so when they made the moves they moved, made, you got to respect it. You right. got to respect it. And you got to understand it. And even Jay Prince, right. who led the way for them, of you got to understand, man, it's a whole deal. I'm biased, nigga. Right. I'm an old nigga that's biased. You and know you what I'm saying? Real, you letting that be known, though. <laughs> I'm an old biased nigga, man. I ain't trying to hear it, man. I love what we do. Mm -hmm. I love what we started. And I know that when when, when you had the Down South Hustlers uh, 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 tapes and, and all that stuff coming out, it wasn't respected on the level that everybody's respecting us nah, now. Yeah, right. So I don't forget that. Never so I ain't gonna that. play with that. Like and when you start seeing the people like uh, you know, Pete it came out the time that he did and started working with the artists in these areas, mm -hmm. niggas didn't really care about that like that. Right. Niggas right. were laughing at that. Facts. Let's be true. real. Not so at the end of the day, the foundation was laid by some real, real stomp down niggas, man. Some real ones like, you know, they come from a different place. So I look at it from a different perspective. Right. Now, what I would say about that, like I said, definitely because like you said, when, when Pac and Biggie was alive, I felt like the game was kind of locked up. You had the East and the West and that's why even when Outkast got booed, it's like nobody didn't care about the that's South. That's right. That's but exactly then, right. I forgot Pac about Outkast. And Biggie died, or whatever, you know, because Jermaine Dupri was you know, having fun and all that, and Puffin was dancing around New York with shiny suits on, but Master P filled that void with that gangster stuff, but he appealed to the South with the gold tee, you know, and everybody was like, oh, man, them dudes country. And the slang. And the, and the, slang, saying, the, 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 the slang talk. and all that, but that's the thing that Pimp C and him embraced, like, y'all don't think we cool, but we rap, we, we making country rap tunes, y'all can have that hip-hop shit. So when P felt like, well, damn, we got a we got a market for this, and 38% of the people that live in America live in the South is like 121 million people that live in the South and it's probably about 321 million people that live in America. So, Master he P knew that. Stuff. Huh? You know yeah, your stuff. Yeah, Master P knew that. Whatever. And he, I mean, we from Louisiana, which is 4.6 million, and Texas is 29 million. But him knowing that all these big, in Florida got like about 21 million. So if you get all these southern places, and then by them kind of, this is in the south, like, oh, y'all ain't no real hip hop, y'all the south. But the south big, like I said, 38% of the people live in the south. If you appeal to those country people that they might call country boys, that's what made P big. And that's why you get the young, your guy is the people like Dolph, people like Nipsey looking up to them because Master P and them, made these type of deals where people was thinking, man, these dudes country, they're stupid, they ain't gonna get no deal like that. But people like Russell Simmons got a production deal just to make the record. People like uh, uh, fucking, um, what his name is, Dr. Dre and um, Suge Knight, they get a joint venture. But P and Babe and them getting distribution deals and they could put all their records out. They could drop all the time. They could get a production team and put out music like Motown was doing in Detroit. So he took that whole hustle and brought it to the South. But they just think, oh, these country boys ain't going to know what they're doing or whatever. But P like, look, just give me this uh, deal. I'm going to have enough money to promote my records and we're going to figure out who dumb in the end. And little did me. they know, and right? Little, little, did. little did they know. Little did they but know. Shout out to Jay Prince them because, like man, you said, Jay, Jay Prince, did, man, they looked up to Jay Prince. Jay baby Prince made you respect P. the South. He yeah. he could have took that a different way. He, right. he he talked about the time when he went up to New York, and but they started acting New Yorkish. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if that's a word. Yeah. But when they when they did, he made them come back to Houston. That you know the ghetto boys and all that. So right. we could. So and I can't wait to interview him. But this coming. Yeah, I remember he was saying he said because at first you that's know the right. first ghetto boys they were trying to rap like they were from New York, and he was like, man. We got a clean house and get out, get out. That's and we right. We got to blaze the trailer, make them respect. 
respect our sound And it's the same thing Dr. Dre and them had to do In Cali And they showed it on a movie They was trying to rap like They from New York And they're like Man we gotta just do it our way And that's why Easy was perfect So anytime you embrace your sound You look and identify Where you from yeah. It's gonna transcend And I feel like That's what Cash Money did good And that's what No Limit did good And man. you know Three Six and all them dudes Man and I hope you enjoying Boss Talk 101 man You heard G the P putting it down man So I have one last question I want to know, so out of all of these people, influential people that you've met, because you're the person that loves to soak up knowledge, I can tell right now. I read a lot, yeah. So who has influenced your life the most, whereas gave you the most game, and what game did they give you? Uh, my mama gave me, my mom and my dad and all that stuff like that, I always saying, like I said, be slow to speak, quick to listen, um, you know. But I'm talking do, people in the industry. Industry that I ever met that really gave me... Um, a Maybe nobody gave you any game. Like, a lot of times, no. A lot, a lot of it wasn't. Like I said, I got some stuff from Sean and all that stuff like that. Um, like I said, just being consistent and keep working. Like just start and just don't stop. Whatever and all. Like you got to start somewhere. So that was the main thing. But most of the stuff I got was from people that I never really met. I just read books, oh, okay. and I was like, man, if I can't meet Master P, I can't meet Birdman. I can't read me that they read a Barry Gordy. Let me go watch documentaries. Let me go w read a book or whatever. Let me go read books about Jeff Bezos, Steve Jobs, different hear people. That? He giving some jewels yeah. now. Y'all need to go do some research and really, really pay attention. Yeah, the books or whatever. The books take you place. So I just was like, if I could just learn from like Mickey Stevenson, this was the main person that was the AR at Motown Records. I'm reading about how you work with artists and this stuff. So I'm like, all right, I could do this. This is why artists get mad when you kind of tell them about stuff because they're a little more sensitive about their stuff. Mm -hmm. So you kind of know how to deal with them because you're reading about people that actually did it before. Clyde right. Davis. So Jermaine Dupree, Russ Simmons, all of them. So I got a lot of game from the books, really. Wow, I want to ask books. you about something you just said. We gonna we gonna get you out of here because I know you you got you a busy man. You got things going on. Um, I want to talk to you about that Sean Cotton. You said he got a lot of game from him. A lot of times people don't really understand how fast he's he's moving up the you know the he's he's filling spaces in places where the legend set. To right. be honest with yeah. you, you have to talk about Sean Cotton because Hell yeah. he's he, for the South and, and what he does. With say cheese and what he's accomplished mm -hmm. in 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 that brand, right? Um, let's talk about him for a second and the way that he influenced you because you spoke on it mm -hmm. and you put his name in that category. And a lot of people, we even got a gatekeeper list in Dallas, man. Where yeah, he said he hated being on yeah, the only one. Now, you heard him on there. It don't matter. It don't matter. They retired he, his name. Yeah, they this retired year. him. Right, so, right. but let's just let's just talk about his influence in the in in this era in the hip hop and the way that he's. Uh, Really, really gave us something to motto as a brother because I respect him a lot. Me too, and and I love what he's done. So let's just talk about. Man, that. I like Sean. Like I said, man, Sean help uh, give you a helping hand. And like I said, by him posting me all them times on CT when nobody knew who I was, and I just was having opinions about hip hop and what I thought about things, and he kept posting me for free. When you know he said you could either pay. Or get popping if you if you want to be on here you can pay and be on some platforms don't even let you pay to be on this stuff to even get I seen never by all those people I don't do that right that's what I'm saying but he give the underdogs a shot and like I said if you want to pay you could be on there if you don't you could be cool you know you could have some viral stuff and I like it and post it and he did that for me and then it turned the light on me and I was like well damn then I went to listen to his interviews I'm like well damn we kind of got a lot of similarities he loved hip hop he talk about this stuff I could kind of start doing this and build up my own thing and build up my own thing where I could break artists like him and Sean and broke a lot of artists that people didn't know about. Like I saw Quando Rondo rapping on the back of a car, beating on a car before he even was with Young Boy and all that. On Say Cheese, you know, I seen stuff with Rod Wade. A lot of people that I seen on Say Cheese or whatever. Seen you know, Rod Wade on Yeah, that. I seen on um, when he interviewed Kevin Geese and all that early and stuff like like a lot of things that um that I was seeing and was what Sean was doing. And Sean just all about helping people. So, you know, like he did the stuff with Ride Four Nine and all that. He was instrumental in that. You know, he came down and interviewed Super Bad and all that for me and all. That. He even interviewed BTY Youngin. He interviewed Nino Kelvin. A lot of artists, even from now, I can't remember everybody because you know it'd be kind of hard. But he did a lot of stuff, and he always showed love to New Orleans and Lil Wayne, one of his favorite. Um, rappers. rappers and he got Wayne tatted on his arm like yeah. Michael Jackson Kobe and Floyd Mayweather so I know how much he loved New Orleans and New Orleans was one of the first cities he said embraced him like St. Louis and New Orleans so he always had a special spot in his heart for New Orleans but I feel like 
brothers like him make it and don't forget. And he still always say, put your 10,000 hours in like he got on his ties. And he just always a pull up to up and coming dudes and say, man, I'll get on your podcast. I'll let you interview me. He just don't act all Hollywood and out of touch. And I feel like a lot of times people be like, oh man, Sean Cotton this and he that or he lame. or he, Man, that dude still tweet everybody back on Twitter. He just engage with people and I just feel like he a good dude. And if more people, you know, would pull brothers up or whatever when they get a chance, it'll make it a stronger. So I always try to Help people out or whatever And I always feel like You know We could be strong If we just help one another out And I feel like That's what Sean Represent just Another brother Helping another brother out Giving people chances If you see something special In you He gonna, he gonna help stamp you and, and he don't even Gotta have nothing To gain from it Cause he didn't make A dime off me Yeah you gotta think about it He's he, 30 He's barely over 30 something years old He's came into a place where he filled a void that needed to be filled for our culture. Definitely. He's definitely a great uh, entrepreneur. He's a great businessman. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what people, he has. He just opened up a store downtown in mm -hmm. Deep Elm. The clothing store, yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and he got a partner. I, I always t shout that store out. But to be that young and to make the move that he's made, mm -hmm. uh, he, he definitely is one that you're going to have to, give the mantle to as one of these older guys like myself to right. say, hey, man, this guy doing things that we didn't even have a chance to do. This guy opened doors that we couldn't even open. In this era, yeah. He's creating waves in business for young black entrepreneurs to be able to understand a way. Mm -hmm. A young kid like my kid right. that can look at him, my 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 14-year-old uh, and my 16-year-old can look at a Sean Cotton and now they can see a way being paved from what he has created and say, you know, if he could do it, then I could do it. Yeah, like I said, I love you how see you, what I'm saying. Yeah, I love how he curate the stuff. Like I say, he find the right content, curate the stuff, and you know he doing what he doing in hip hop in this era. And like I say, say is definitely needed, and it's definitely a part of the culture. And that's why the source recognized this platform in the magazine and say like this is a powerful blogger, Sean Cotton. And like I said, Sean Cotton come from working a nine to five to being a millionaire. So it kind of give you that American dream story too. Like you could just have it if you got the passion, the drive, and the hard work, and you understand that your team matter and everybody. Play a part just like we having a surgery. A surgeon, you know, all the people that's in that room helped out with that surgery to be successful. Uh, any CEO or any football coach, that team, and he got a team of people. And just like you said, your team, everybody matter. And just having that person that can understand people and listen. And I feel like that's how he is, and that's what makes him a good leader. Yeah, well, I see. I see a lot of people like the '85 South shows. I see mm -hmm. Gilly the Kid and all those mm -hmm. guys and uh, um, Drink Champs. But right. when I look at a guy like Sean Cotton, like I said, and it, he. He didn't in certain places, certain things that he didn't have, wasn't afforded those opportunities. Right. He had to get but out he the made them respect right. him in this industry, right. and that's a difference. I'm not saying those guys didn't get it out of mud in their own way, but when you've been an artist and you've already been had had name. big names and stuff, then it's a little bit different for mm -hmm. you than it would be for a guy like Sean who who really had never been on any of those search. He had to make those people in those rooms respect him. Right. You know respect what I mean? On a whole nother level. So Say Cheese is one of those places where I don't think it goes nowhere. Right. I think it's going to be around for a long time. Nah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah. Definitely a trailblazer. Yeah. He definitely created a whole new lane and showed a lot of people that in this era that how important blogging is and how important people like him are to breaking talent and stuff. And definitely, that's why Believe I didn't know about him. I mess with him all the time. I give him those texts just to say, hey, man, keep doing what you're doing. I do it. Uh, you know what I mean? But I might not even get a reply or whatever, but I always send them because I know he get them. We all busy. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of friends I do like that, but he one of those guys that I'm always checking in with. And like I said, time is right. He'll jump on the show. He's working, I'm working, you working, mm -hmm. we all working. So we got to respect everybody in the lane that they're in and make sure that we don't forget about them, but also push them up when we get a chance. Yeah, like I said, he told me I was a New Orleans spokesman and all that, and he gave me that nickname. And like I said, I, I always him. show him love, and even on Twitter, because he loves Twitter, I always tweet. He loves Twitter. Sean, keep, I man, keep doing your thing. I appreciate what you did, and I ain't, ain't no dick riding. It's just me being real. No, you're supposed to. Showing love that somebody helped me out of it. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Say, we're in the South, man. That nigga in the South, man. I don't care if you can feel it. That nigga in the South right yeah, now. Yeah. And he, uh, he was 12 when he came to, to the South, but he he ours. You yeah, see he said he loves the South. Yeah. Oh, he, oh, he ours. So mm -hmm. I got he go up there too though, but that boy worldwide. He uh, everybody gonna get it from some of that say cheese and boss talk one one. We on your tail. We we right here. Hey, we just pulled up, nigga. Right. We ain't only been here a year, but we got you sitting there, man. G the P uh, in here with me, man. And so like I said, I appreciate you and your wife for having me and stuff like that. Um, How can people get a hold of you? Well, my Instagram got to save, but if they give it back, yeah, what? yeah, they did it again or whatever. Damn, um, one of them got deleted. The other one came back when I was on say cheese, but I, I hopefully they give it back. They did email me, but if they could find me. On Twitter is G E E D 
Y underscore P on Twitter and on Instagram. If I get it back, it's G E E D Y underscore P underscore S P E A K S speaks. Man, thank you so much, man. We love you. Thank bro. you, man. Thank you. I love y'all too. Man, appreciate the y'all love, man. Me. Just for coming. Thank y'all. Hey, for listen, me. man. Thank just ball, me. just boss me. talk one on five, nigga. I make up words as I go. The right. nigga boss talk one on five, nigga. He's with us you now. You can do y'all. that. I mean, um, <laughs> what, he uh, he fought me a lot. His nigga fought me young nigga. But this nigga know, don't he? Mm-hmm. Man, every time I come to New Orleans, man, you gotta sit down with us, man. You, right. And you gotta come to Dallas. I'll be coming to Dallas all the time. So you coming on the show? Yeah, I'll come on the show because I gotta go back up there to Dallas to uh, meet up with Big D again or whatever. Because he pulled an interview with you. Come, you coming? You coming to see me? Of course, yeah. Damn, I'm Hell happy, yeah. man. Yeah. Look at what God. Look at God. Hell man, yeah. I've been trying to be on y'all show. I keep telling you. You this, ain't called me. I didn't know how to get in touch with you or whatever. Instagram. Like. Inbox. Y'all had the number on there. I did. My so, number on no, there. I think I did probably DM y'all before. You can't see it now because my stuff deactivated. What? So. Nah, I've been trying to. Yeah, hell man, yeah. Man, I'm glad God sent you to me. You don't even know, man. Yeah. G to be in the building, man. Hey, Thank man. Y'all. Thank you, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss is talk. Rest in peace, PFC. Man. So just slim. Man. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101.